game one in the books of round two of the Eastern Conference playoffs. And as you can see by the music, man, it was not the outcome that the Knicks were looking for, man. Knicks did get off to a hot start, led by R.J. Barrett, led by Jalen Brunson. But in the second half, it was all heat as the heat adjusted, got into their bag, got some veteran uh, uh, veteran achievements from Kyle Lowry, Jimmy Butler, and the refs. Shout out to Tony Brothers. And it was all for naught for the Knicks, man. 108 to 101. Knicks lose this series opener, man. Nevertheless, uh, I love the way these guys started the game. Uh, RJ looked to, to have picked up where he left off against the Cavaliers. I thought he was finishing well. I thought he did a very good job passing. Uh, very good job just pro probing the defense and playing strong, being aggressive. In the first half, Brunson was able to get to his spots at will. He really had no answer for him either. But you could kind of see the game starting to change in the second quarter. And late in the second quarter, the Heat were starting to make their charge. And they were able to cut that Nick Lee down from double digits to about five going into mm -hmm. halftime. And, you know, I'm walking around MSG, chopping it up. People with people like, hey, CP, what do you think about the first half? I said, I didn't like how we ended it. I didn't like how we ended it. I felt momentum leaving us and the C team starting to settle in. Not that we couldn't win the game. Obviously, we were still up. But mm -hmm. you were not going to see the same Heat team that you saw in the first half in the second half. And in the second half, they made their adjustments. I thought Miami did an excellent job in terms of packing the paint. And, hey, in the playoffs, you're going to look to take away something, right? What were the Heat going to take away? And as you saw, the Knicks were still able to get a ton of points in the paint in this game. So the Heat were trying to take that away. They were trying to take away those easy points and say, hey, if you're going to beat us tonight, you're going to beat us from downtown. The Heat have seen the tape. They've seen the stats from the Cleveland series. The Knicks have not shot the three ball well at all. And here it is tonight, 21% from downtown. So they packed the paint on Brunson. They packed the paint on RJ. There was no Julius. There was no other shot creation threat out there. IQ hasn't really been playing well. And so I thought we played right into their hands. This is on top of the fact that you don't have Julius. And that is a big deal. A lot of fans will say, we're, we're, you know, you listen to a lot of these, uh, some of these pregame shows and some of these thoughts. Oh, we don't need Julius. We're good. We can win without him. Not so fast. Not so fast. Because in these games, if you're not going to be able to hit the three, you need guys that are going to be able to hit tough shots. And who's going to give you the best chance to do so outside of Brunson? If IQ's a non-factor, where else are you going to get that from? I don't disagree. Look, you need Julius Randle. I, I, I wrote that in the most recent article today. Like, I believe in Obi and his capabilities. No doubt about it. But you need another guy out there who's going to draw the double team. You got Brunson, he's drawing double teams. They're going to challenge everybody else. Look, you're going to sag off RJ and say, okay, we're going, to, we're going to dare you to shoot. Josh Hart... You know, the, the, the crazy three-point shooting percentage on two attempts per game, sure, we'll keep daring you to shoot. Julius, it is different with his physicality. You see that it's missed. Correct. You see that it's missed. And if you put him out there, you think Kevin Love's going to – Kevin Love's not going to stop him. Kevin Love's your starting power, power forward. He's not going to stop Julius. Right. So what are you going to do? Now you gotta, now you got to think about Bam Adebayo on Julius Randle or Mitchell Robinson. And talking to Wes Goldberg – Bam's dealing with a nagging hamstring injury. You put Julius out there, use his physicality. It switches things up, makes things a little bit more difficult. There's no way you can just look at this, at this team and be like, we're going to be fine without Julius Randle. He brought us here, okay? Obi can help. I, I, I've asked for Obi to get minutes yeah. because you see what Obi can do. Like games like today, games like against the Cavs, like when you see him close out, he can help. He can yeah. give Julius that rest, okay? You have a dynamic nature with your power forward position where you can go thunder and lightning. Utilize it. But we got to keep, we got to be level headed here and say we still need Julius Randle.
it's one of those things where it's like you get handed home court in the second round by like the grace of God. And then you kind of just hand it right back to the heat, which is like really frustrating. But I mean, I think uh, people might call in today, like over analyzing this game. I think it really is kind of simple. Like what happened here, right? Like we just couldn't hit three pointers. Like we had so many open looks, like we left so much meat on the bone mm-hmm. and credit to the heat. I mean, they just executed and like they dared us to shoot threes. They gambled on that and it worked. You know what I mean? And then on top of that, it's the other things too. Like I thought the real moment in the game that kind of shifted all the momentum was like IQ with the unforced errors, like fouling on a three pointer, four point play. Yeah. It's a big swing, puts them right back in the game. You know, we have like a couple of missed free throws. Like we hit a couple of threes. We hit a couple of those missed free throws, right? Like we don't, maybe we get back on defense. We don't let uh, Kevin Love throw like two or three of these touchdown oh, passes. Killers, right? man. Killers. <laughs> like in a playoff series, like all those, every possession matters, right? <clears throat> and I think I disagree with the last caller who said like, you know, acting job from Jimmy Butler. Like, I think you really rolled that ankle. Like on that mm-hmm. replay, his foot was like completely sideways. So, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. uh but the one thing that kind of drove me crazy, like Alex was saying, like not going at him when he remained in the game. Like there was one possession late that made me so upset. It was like they brought Mitch up or somebody up on a pick and roll and then they just switched it. And I was like, let RJ just go. If RJ can't take him one on one with a bum right. ankle, like after he just rolled it, then like, <laughs> like what is he really going to be able to take him? So I don't yeah. know. I, I would. <laughs> I'm like thinking of Clyde here where it's like, you know, Clyde would say like, oh, someone got a broken hand. Like I'm going right at that hand. I'm going right at that ankle. So like yeah. this next game, they got to go at him and really test him and see. They lost their edge, gonna... but they, but yeah. give credit to the heat. They took it, man. They took it. Yeah. I mean, I mean, just, just watch this lead evaporate in the third quarter. Back to back to back. It seemed like uh cherry picked transition buckets. It was disgusting at, at that point. I have to say, at the end of the game, I know people don't want to give him as much slack as I'm going to give him, but I got to uh, I gotta tip my hat off to Jalen Brunson for trying hard on defense. He didn't have mm-hmm. it tonight offensively. But the main guy I blame for the loss is R.J. Barrett. Those last mm-hmm. five minutes, those last five minutes were so crucial, and he flopped. He was doing so well the first three. But then the last five minutes in money time, he had boneheaded turnover. He saw the, the, under, the, the lackluster pass he threw to Josh Hart. The, him driving to the lane, doing the same thing he was doing the first three quarters when Miami Heat adjusted and they knew what he was going to do because Jalen Brunson seemed like he wasn't being assertive enough to have the ball in his hands when he is the man that we count on in the fourth quarter. And R.J. Barrett just, he looked like somebody that I didn't know at first because I'm like, yo, dude, you're doing so well the first three. And you're trying to do the same thing you was doing before. They're adjusting to it. And you're not adjusting accordingly to what they're giving you. I know he's not good, doing well with the shot and everything, but he's missing free throws. He was missing free throws. Like he should never miss. And then he's driving to the lane. They, they blocked him the other time. Martin blocked him. Then he stripped him when he went to the lane again. Took a boneheaded um, mid-range offensive. shot. Offensive. Yeah. He picked up offensive. the offensive foul. I thought yeah. I thought Martin, Martin got into it, you know, got him off his game, got him off his square a little bit in that stretch. Wasn't good. Was, wasn't good. It was bad for RJ with that. Like, I, I hope he takes responsibility for that and gets better. Because in the first three quarters, he, if he did that in the fourth, because he was, he was playmaking, and then he stopped. Yeah. Total yeah. vision RJ was back. I'm like, oh, come on, dude. Now, last thing I want to say, quickly yeah. should have been out of that game, so I blame Tibbs for that. Should have been yeah. out of that game early in the fourth. He was not giving you anything. He, he, he doesn't look like himself. We, we raving about six men in the year. You ain't looking like it right now, even, even in the Cavs series and all. And, 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 for all, and for all of that, you should have put Obi in. Take quickly out, put Obi. He was the only one giving you at least consistent three-point shooting. Mm-hmm. Jalen Brunson didn't have it. He should have went with Obi with there. I would have took my chance to did that because you already had the link. You already still had Josh Hart there for the grittiness. They were all rebounding very well, so you should have put Obi in there. Hopefully he realizes that if Julius Randle doesn't be available in game two, but let's see what happens after that. But at the end of the day, we haven't been great offensively throughout the playoffs. We yeah. have to do better with moving the ball. Jalen Brunson, stop being ISO, ISO heavy. you got to get people involved naturally. Main thing I like about a prime point guard, just, just, just before I go, when Chris Paul is in his prime, when he was scoring a lot, he scored when he needed to. But he was a willing passer first, and he, when he had to score 30 and get 10 assists, he would do that. And then Brunson just start doing that a little bit more. And I think the team will flow a little bit better. Yeah. Get your Knicks Fan TV playoff gear, your playoff gear, and your snaps at shop. 
www.knicksfantv.com. The vibes are still immaculate, Al's great shirt. And we'll see you guys on Monday, man.